Hi, welcome to this final chapter on how to paint this Space Marine Champion. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint the sword and integrate it with the rest of the figure. In the second part, I'll show you the final touches I added to take the miniature to the next level. So, let's get to it. To create a simple yet striking metallic effect, I'm going to use three specific colors, dark sea blue, French blue, and pale blue. Then, to add depth and ambience, I'll use a very dark and saturated violet called Hexed Lichen from Vallejo Game Air. For the highest highlights and flashes of the metal, I'll use a bit of white. The brand doesn't matter. For the armor weathering, I'll use Rhinox Hide mixed with violet. I'll add a bit of blue-green to give it chromatic richness, and any yellow to create some golden reflections on the armor. First, I'm going to give the sword a base coat of dark sea blue. Make sure to cover the entire surface evenly. This solid base will be the perfect foundation for the next steps. Next, I'll start adding the first highlights using French blue. There are many ways to create a non-metallic metal effect on a sword. You can go for a checkered pattern, like Games Workshop does, or paint a Damascus steel, which is quite trendy right now. However, I'll interpret it as a highly polished blade, lit from a single direction. On the opposite side of the blade, the only light I'll paint will be a couple of reflections from the armor. Pay attention to the brush stroke I'm making right now. Instead of gently using the tip of the brush as I usually do, I'm applying a bit more pressure in some areas. This creates a pattern or texture that resembles polished metal. After painting the first sketch of the blade, I'll apply a second highlight using pale blue. This much lighter tone will serve as the sword's highest light, adding intense contrast and emphasizing the material's characteristic reflectivity. I'm going to push this light a bit, placing it near the character's face to further center the figure's focal point. Unlike what I normally do, this time I'm not going to layer the second highlight exactly over the first one. Instead, I'll offset it, overlapping the edges, and breaking up the first highlight. This gives a sense of random discontinuous lighting that more realistically mimics the look of polished metal. Now, I prepare a glaze by mixing 50% dark sea blue and 50% water. Before using it, I remove the excess paint on a paper. I apply it with very light pressure, starting in the areas of highest light and ending in the shadows. This step will allow me to smooth the transitions between the different tones and reduce unnecessary contrasts in the highlights. If I overdo it with the glaze and erase some highlights I want to keep, I just repaint them with the previous tones. This is quite common. The whole process is a constantly evolving sketch. Next, I prepare a glaze in the airbrush, using four drops of water for one drop of pale blue. I apply it carefully to the areas of highest light to create that diffused light effect seen on highly reflective surfaces. Notice here how I've used too much paint. I correct the mistake with my finger without any fear. I don't expect it to be perfect on the first try. It's important to insist with several passes of thin layers, waiting for the paint to dry before reapplying it in the same spot. Observe how the airbrush is very close to the miniature. That's the ideal distance for applying this type of glaze. Now I'm going to create a shadow glaze with the airbrush 
using the same ratio as before. Four drops of water to one of dark sea blue. I apply this mix to the shadowed side of the blade, which helps define the light planes and makes the front of the figure stand out more clearly. Next, I mix six drops of water with one of hexed lichen in the airbrush and apply it to the deepest shadow areas of the sword. This tone not only deepens and increases the contrast of the shadows, but also helps integrate the sword with the rest of the figure. Since I've already used violet on other parts of the armor and the base, this color ties the whole scheme together. Mixing a bit of white with pale blue, I'll use the edge of the brush to edge highlight all the borders of the sword and accentuate the brightest light near the face. It's worth mentioning that I never use pure white. I always mix it with a color I've used previously or apply it as a glaze. To finish up, I'm going to go over the deepest shadow areas with Hexed Lichen. This paint has a satin finish that will add extra contrast to the blade. While it's a detail that might not always stand out in photos or videos, it makes a big difference in person. To Rhinox Hide, I add Hexed Lichen to darken and saturate it. With this new mix, I'm going to mark the wear and tear on the armor. When it comes to these details, I believe less is more. It's important for the armor to have some wear to give our character atmosphere and credibility, showing that they've seen many battles. However, I shouldn't overdo it, as I risk overwhelming the figure and losing the volume I've previously created. The wear should be just an additional element that enriches the figure, not the main focus of the scene. Next, I create a glaze with white, using a 50 50 mix of paint and water. I apply it over all the areas I consider to be the focal points of the figure, like the top of the shoulder pads, the neck, arms, hands, and the character's forehead. In this last case, I apply the glaze very delicately and softly. Next, using blue-green, I'm going to apply small touches of paint to the shadowed areas of the figure. For example, on the base, the legs, the back of the shoulder pads, and the arms. You might wonder why I'm adding this new color. It's because this blue creates a color triad with the orange of the metals and the violet of the armor and base, enriching and harmonizing the color composition. To finish, I'll create a glaze with one drop of water and a tiny bit of yellow. It's going to be a very, very diluted glaze. And I'll apply it to different parts of the base and anywhere I think the gold might reflect on the white of the armor. The goal here is to unify and harmonize the piece. This last step doesn't take much time, but it adds a lot of visual coherence to the figure. So I encourage you to apply it to all your miniatures. Although I could keep refining some details, I prefer to call the miniature finished here. I believe I've reached more than an adequate level for a 42mm figure. Well, that's it. We've reached the end of this four episode series dedicated to this Space Marine Champion. I hope you found it useful and that you can apply these techniques to your own miniatures. Thank you so much for joining me in this process. See you in the next video.